Hello, everyone, and welcome. We will be starting in one minute. Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm Kimberly, I'm an instructor at the Howard County Library System. Um, a few housekeeping things before we begin. Um, today we're going to be hearing from several presenters and our partners, um, but the audience will not be able to unmute themselves during the presentation. If you have any questions or technical difficulties, please submit um, technical difficulties in the chat or um, Zoom's Q&A feature for questions. Um, for your information, real-time captions are available for this class. Um, please just click on the CC or closed captioning button on your Zoom window to toggle them on or off. Please note that these captions are automatically generated by Zoom, so they may contain some errors. Uh, please note that today's session will be recorded and made available at a later date on HCLS's YouTube channel. Anytime that I am uh, saying that things are going to be in the chat, those links will also be in the description of the YouTube video. Walktober 2021 is a celebration of our state's official exercise initiative and a call to action to promote walking for physical activity and improved health for residents of all ages and abilities. Um, you can join the Howard County Local Health Improvement Coalition by clicking on the link that I'm going to be putting in the chat. Also, today's class is presented by the Howard County Health Department in partnership with the Howard County Office of Transportation and, and Maryland Department of Transportation's Highway Safety Office. For your information, you can visit the local Walktober website at the link that I'm going to be putting in the chat. We are joined today by Rodney Oldham. Rodney is an edu health education program coordinator with the Howard County Health Department. He is a military veteran and has worked in the public health sector for over 10 years. He also sat on the South Carolina Governor's Council for Physical Fitness during his time living in South Carolina. Fun fact about Rodney, he likes to exercise and watch movies, and he's a big fan of the Washington football team. Thank you, Rodney, for joining us today, and I'll turn the presentation over to you. No problem, Kim. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here. I um, just wanted to start the presentation with a quick opening remarks. Um, physical activity is something that we all can do and benefit from. It doesn't matter whether we walk, bike, or roll. Physical activity can be adapted to fit all of our particular needs. So what are some of the benefits of walking and being physically active? Next slide, please. Some of the benefits of walking and being physically active are the reducing obesity, uh, lowering the blood sugar, as well as managing stress, and as well as lowers high blood pressure. Like I said, these are just some of the benefits of walking and being physically active. The infograph that you see reflects some of those things that physical activity helps to improve, as well as to reduce the risk of. Next slide, please. Health benefits for physical activity. You can see as you're looking at this visually on your left, you see the uh, left side there, it says for the immediate and on the right side, it says some of the long-term. I'll just highlight a couple of the benefits, health benefits for physical activity. On the immediate side, you can see on there that it helps to improve your sleep quality and reduces your risk of feeling anxious. As far as some of the, the positive long-term benefits on there, it does help to reduce the risk of developing dementia, Alzheimer's, and also with reducing the risk of depression. And you look on the healthy weight, reduce the risk of weight gain, as well as the healthy heart, it lowers the risk of heart disease, stroke, and type two diabetes, as well as reducing the risk of falls. Next slide, please.
Some guidelines here for safe physical activity. First and foremost, which is very important, consult with a physician before starting an exercise program. Choose types of physical activity that are appropriate for your current fitness level as well as your health goals because some activities are safer than others. And make sure that you increase your physical activity over time to meet those particular um, guideline health goals. And active people should start low and go slow, starting with low intensity activities and gradually increase often over time. Next slide, please. Here, this is a breakdown here that I'm going to do for physical activity for adults and well as older adults. On there from the screen, you can see um, ideal typical physical activity guideline goals is for adults and older to receive at least 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous physical intensity aerobic activity or the equivalent of a mixture of moderate or physical activity. Basically what they're saying is just get out, get moving. This means doing activities that get your heart beating faster. Try to do this, try to have these forms of activities at least two days a week that helps keep the muscles, bones and joints strong. For older adults who cannot meet that guide, the recommended guidelines of at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity or the 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity. They should be as physically active as their abilities and conditions allow. Try to focus on the physical activities that help to build strength, balance, flexibility, and endurance. You're gonna hear more about the older adult um, at next week's session as far as activities for them, so stay tuned. Next slide, please. Children. Some of the goals we have for children are, um, the physical activity guidelines recommend that children ages five to 17 should do at least 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Physical activity helps to promote the child's ability to concentrate better, helps with healthy growth, and helps to prevent disease and unhealthy weight gain. For youth with chronic conditions or disabilities who aren't able to meet the above key guidelines, they should engage in regular physical activity according to their abilities and should avoid inactivity. Work with a healthcare professional or physical activity specialist to understand the types and the amounts of physical activity that's appropriate for you. Key thing in this, you don't have to do all the recommended minutes at one setting. You can break the exercises minute wise into smaller periods of time throughout the day. So basically you don't have to do all 60 minutes at one time. If you do a physical activity, there's 10 minutes here, hour or so later to do another 10 minutes, it is cumulative in effect. As long as ideally that you get the recommended 60 minutes. Next slide, please. Physical activity for disabled adults. Click on the next one if you want, please. All right, let me go back, I'm sorry. Let's go back to that one. For adults with chronic, there we go. For adults with chronic conditions or disabilities who aren't able to meet the physical, recommended physical activity guidelines, they should engage in regular physical activity according to their abilities, and should avoid inactivity. Work with a healthcare professional or physical activity specialist to understand the types and the amounts of physical activity that's appropriate for you. Now we go to the next slide, please. Now, this time I'm gonna turn it over to one of my panelists, here, Chris, but I wanted to read his bio real quick. Chris, he taught, is a bicycle and pedestrian coordinator for the Howard County Office of Transportation. In his role, Chris is focused on improving street safety for all, 
providing equitable transportation options and helping create a bikeable and walkable Howard County. Fun fact about Chris is that he grew up in England and moved to the United States when he was 15 years old. And once you hear him, you'll recognize it when you hear the accent. Chris, the floor is yours. Thanks, Rodney. Um, so I was just going to talk for a few minutes about um, what I get to do for a living. I'm very fortunate to have this job for Howard County. And um, a big part of my job is helping make our community more bike and walk friendly um, since I'm the bicycle and pedestrian coordinator for the county. Um, so what we've been doing as a, as a county government with our partners uh, to try to make our community more bike and walk friendly. Um, we started out a few years ago with a pedestrian and bicycle master plan, or two separate master plans that, um, that we worked on and uh, they got approved by the county council. So they are official um, planning documents for Howard County, which kind of shows where all the, all the uh, new sidewalks and pathways and, and bicycle facilities can go throughout the county. Um, but we're also working on this Howard County Complete Streets effort um, that I wanted to talk about today because this is current and ongoing, very much active at this time. Um, so the Complete Streets effort is really um, to make sure the county has all the policy and uh, engineering guidance it needs um, to ensure that our streets are designed for everybody. Um, everybody meaning not just people in their cars, but that our streets are accessible for people walking, biking, people in wheelchairs, people riding the bus. Um, our streets need to work well and be, most importantly, be safe and comfortable for all street users. Um, so that is somewhat of a new way of thinking, or it's an adjustment in um, the way that people think about streets, which have been mostly dominated by cars and motor vehicles for decades, um, especially in this country. Um, but a lot of communities are shifting to a, a more complete streets mindset where um, safety is the number one priority and, um, and people that are not in their cars um, are accommodated with, with safe uh, accommodations. So first of all, we set a policy statement um, and a policy document for Howard County Complete Streets, which basically says what I've just been saying, that our streets need to be designed so that they accommodate everybody and that safety is the number one priority and that the fast moving of, of automobiles will not be prioritized over the safety of people not in automobiles. Um, so that got passed through the County Council about two years ago. So that is an official policy of Howard County. Um, and that set into motion several follow-up steps. Um, one of which is, what we're, is we're, what we're working on now, and it's to update the Howard County Design Manual. And this would be a good place to go to the next slide, if we could. Thank you. So we're updating the Howard County Design Manual. The Design Manual is basically our um, instructions book for roads and streets in Howard County. It's what the designers and the engineers use to design our streets or to, to modify our streets that are already at, both for existing streets and for any new streets that might be coming along. Um, so it's really important that we have the right guidance in there so that engineers are directed to make sure our streets are accommodating to everybody, that they have sidewalks, that they have bicycle facilities, that they have good crossing opportunities for people on foot, that they are meeting all the ADA guidelines, um, and that speed is managed on our roadways because speed is a big problem in terms of making our roads uh, less safe and less accommodating for everybody, actually, even people in the cars. Speed is still a big issue and it leads to a lot of the dangers on our roadways. So we've been updating the, the Howard County Design Manual. Um, it's a big task. We've had a Complete Streets implementation team um, of about 14 people working on this for the last year and a half and um, from various sectors, both with the government and with um, nonprofits and um, other um, interests and stakeholders as well, all represented. And we are getting ready to release a draft of this to the public. And we're gonna go through a public process in the month of October coming up with these two workshops that are, um, that are outlined here on this, on this slide and on the next slide. Um, so this, this slide gives a little bit more um, direction, and I think it's going to be put into the into the chat for people that want to see it that way. I'll click on the links um, onto what we're doing with the design manual and the workshops. And then the next slide, if you could click to there now, it gives the um, schedule of the workshops that are coming up for next week. So these are two public workshops 
um, related to this design manual update for next week. So everyone is invited and encouraged to come and learn more about it and provide us some input. We wanna make sure this is something that works well for the public um, and that takes public comment into consideration. So the main workshop is this one I've highlighted here or, or put in red, the workshop one um, that's coming up on Thursday, October 14th. It's gonna be virtual, so it'll be a format similar to this. We'll do it through WebEx, but a similar um, digital online video format. Um, and that's kind of our introduction or a kind of basic um, public facing workshop. So it works for everybody. It'll have um, just general information and um, you know, stuff that's kind of understandable for the public and the right kind of level of information there. We are having a second workshop, which will be more detailed. Um, this is uh, more technical and detailed, a little bit more uh, tailored for people that actually work on the road design, such as engineers um, and prof transportation professionals that work on this stuff. So that one is on Thursday, October 21st um, at 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, anyone is welcome to attend. It's also virtual. Um, but like I said, most members of the public probably would be better suited to the, to the first workshop um, because that's the more general information. So that's what we have coming up. It's an important step in making our streets um, safer for everybody. And obviously that's an important step in terms of um, helping people get out and get moving and be able to, you know, maybe leave the car at home sometimes, get around by walking, biking, and taking transit um, and be safer when doing so. So um, thank you for the chance to talk about that today and I'm looking forward to the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Chris. Now we're gonna move forward with our next presenters, Ms. Julie Quetter and Mr. Ernie Lear. Um, just want to read their bios real quick. Julie Quetter is, works at the Partnerships, Resources, and Outreach Section Program Manager for the Northern Region of the Maryland Department of Transportation's Highway Safety Office. Julie has been a liaison for the Highway Safety Office and the county level for over 10 years, focusing on highway safety. Her focus and drive is connected to the four E's engineers, EMS, law enforcement agencies, and educators by providing resources for speed slash aggressive driving, impaired driving, distracted driving, pedestrian and bicycle safety, and occupant protection. Julie has also been active in expanding highway safety messages supported by the state's zero death law by providing resources and social media toolkits to employers, young drivers, and aging drivers in the Northern region. Julie holds a Bachelor's of Science in Health Education from the University of Maryland, go Terps. Fun fact about her, she's a volunteer walking coach for the Baltimore Women's Classic 5K training program. And Mr. Ernie Lear, he's a safety program manager for the speed and most motorcycle safety at Maryland Department of Transportation at the Highway Safety Office. He has worked at the Highway Safety Office field in the field for 15 years. Ernie began his career as a community traffic safety program manager for Baltimore County before moving to a statewide position. Ernie has been involved in creating, managing, teaching, and evaluating highway safety programs. His particular experience is Lynn to programming for younger and older drivers, as well as motorcyclists. Julie, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Rodney. So we can just get started a little bit about our office. Next slide, please. Next slide, thank you. So our mission at the Maryland Department of Transportation's Highway Safety Office, otherwise known as MHSO, is dedicated to saving lives and preventing injuries by reducing the number and severity of motor vehicle crashes through the administration of a comprehensive and effective network of traffic safety programs. Next slide, please. So at the state level, we have the Strategic Highway Safety Plan, otherwise known as SHSP. And in that, 
we have emphasis program areas that the state focuses on. And our campaign is for outreach and education, and it's called Be the Driver Who Saves Lives. And one area is motorcycle, one is distracted, one is bicycle, one is pedestrian, one is impaired driving, another is seat belts or occupant protection, car seats, and then we also have one for slowdown. So today what we're gonna do is discuss aggressive driving and pedestrian safety. Next slide, please. So our campaign for um, Be the Driver Who Saves Lives for pedestrian and bicyclists and uh, motorists is called Be the Share, Be the Share, Be the Share the Road Driver. And what we emphasize is exercise, but what we also emphasize is walk smart, bike smart, and drive smart. Just always remember when you are a motorist, keep in mind to always ensure that um, to look out and look up um, for pedestrians and bicyclists. And also remember at least some point in the day, we are all pedestrians. Next slide, please. So Ernie's gonna take this slide. So um, we all know that the biggest dangers to pedestrians and bicyclists are car are vehicles, um, vehicles who are you know not driving properly or safely, but especially vehicles that are speeding. Um, if if you are walking or biking in your community and you're out exercising and you would happen to be struck by a vehicle, um, the chances of survival are low, but and the chances of injury are extremely high. So um, we want to just make sure everyone slows down um, and obeys all the posted speed limits because it's so dangerous for pedestrians. Next slide, please. If you look at this, um, if you look at this slide, you'll see that the likelihood of a fatality or an injury goes up exponentially as the speed goes up. So if you just look at from left to right um, at 20 miles an hour, there's a 10% likelihood of a fatality or an injury. If we go to 30 miles an hour, it's 40%. And if we go to 40 miles an hour, it's an 80% likelihood of fatality or injury. So it's really, really important to slow down, obey those speed limits and drive safely all the time, but especially in areas where there are pedestrians and motor and motorcyclists. Sorry, that's my other job. Um, pedestrians and bicyclists, um, because we really need to try to protect them from from these large vehicles. Next slide, please. Um, if you look at the the data here, you can see the pedestrian fatalities from 2020. Um, Baltimore County kind of leads the pack here with 21 and um, your county, Howard County only had six last year and no bicycle fatalities, which is great. Um, but the, the scary thing is that statewide in 2020, there were 61 pedestrian fatalities and seven bicyclist fatalities. And, you know, pedestrians and bicyclists don't generally um, get hurt or, or die from hitting something else. Usually they're involved in a crash that involves a car. So that's why we just wanna talk about the importance of driving safely and obeying the speed limit. Next slide. The other interesting thing is there are aggressive drivers out there and aggressive drivers tend to speed. They tend to not necessarily follow the rules of the road. So if you are, uh, motorist in your vehicle, or if you're a bicyclist or a pedestrian and you see an aggressive driver, the best thing you can do is really just try to get away from him or her. Um, you don't want to get mixed up in whatever's going on in their head and in their vehicle. So if you just try to move out of their way and steer clear of them on the road, um, we want you to get to your place safely. Don't make eye contact. Really try not to um, be threatening at all. Just try to remember that the behavior is not directed at you. It's essentially directed at the roadway for many, many reasons. There's a, there are, there have been books written on why people drive aggressively. Um, it could be anger. It could be that they're late. It could be, you know, a disregard for the law. It's tons of reasons, but unfortunately it, it, it gets people hurt. And the best thing to do when encountering an aggressive driver is just get out of the way, let them go and do their own thing so that you're not part of whatever their thing happens to be that day. Next slide, please. 
and again, you know, as you're walking and biking, you want to make sure that you're aware. You want to make sure you're wearing bright colors so that you can be seen. Um, if regard with regard to the aggressive drivers, if you're in a vehicle um, and you see an aggressive driver, or you don't want to be an aggressive driver, you can allow more time to get um, to your to get to your destination. The red lights and stop signs are a big deal for the for peds and bicyclists. Again, if someone is driving aggressively and doesn't obey the stop lights or the stop signs, that's where we wind up having some issues with regard to pedestrians and bicyclists. So it's super important um, not only to obey the speed limits, but also to obey the signs um, as you're driving. And the next slide. And I'll let Julie take back over. Thank you, Arnie. So this is Signal Woman, um, and she is part of the Look Alive program, which is through Baltimore Metropolitan Council. And Signal Woman is around in Howard County. You can see her on bus shelters, gas toppers, and also there is PSAs on lookalivemd.org. So um, with Signal Woman, she just always advises if you're driving to just stop pedestrians at crosswalks, to always be careful when you're passing buses or stopped vehicles, to slow down and obey the speed limit. And when you turn, yield to people walking and bicycling. Always look for bicyclists before opening your door and allow at least three feet when passing bikes. And always remember to not use your cell phone or text while you're driving. That is a primary law in Maryland. Next slide, please. And if you're walking, again, you see a picture of Signal Woman down there in the corner. So remember, cross the street at crosswalks and intersections. Always use the push buttons and wait for the walk signal to cross. Watch for turning vehicles. Uh, watch out for blind spots around trucks and buses as the pedestrian and uh, avoid using your cell phone when you're crossing the street. Always remember before you cross, look left, right, and left again. And always be visible, especially at night. Wear something light or reflective after dark. Next slide, please. So our resources for today's presentation you can always click on zerodeathsmd.gov. That is through our office, the MDOT MVA Maryland Highway Safety Office, and Look Alive, uh, as I provided that information as well, lookalivemd.org. And then we also re uh, received some information through the Smooth Operator Program. Next slide, please. So um, just to end our presentation, we just all want to ensure, let's all get there safely. Bicycle, pedestrian, or in the car. And always remember to be the driver, to be the driver who saves lives. Next slide. And you can always find us online as well as on our website. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then as well as our website, you can just follow us on Zero Deaths MD. And our last slide, please. Uh, always remember to share the road with pedestrians and bicyclists. And thank you for joining us this morning for this presentation. Thank you, Julie and Ernie. Right now, I just wanna take a, a couple of minutes here to uh, kind of reinforce both what Julie and Ernie had to say regarding our pedestrian safety. So we're gonna watch this brief pedestrian safety video from the National Highway Traffic uh, Safety Administration.
Thank you for that. Next slide here. Uh, just want to reinforce a little bit more and share a little bit more pedestrian uh, safety tips. As you saw in the video on there, don't be a distracted walker. Make sure you unplug from your headphones or your cell phone. Make eye contact. As Julie had mentioned, um, just wear bright reflective clothing at night. Stay alert, Left, always looking left, right, left, especially at intersections and make sure you hit the uh, ped buttons and be mindful and be aware of your surroundings. Do not walk in poorly lit areas or where heavy car traffic may be visible. When possible, consider having a walking buddy or even walking with a pet for increased safety. If you're walking alone, consider carrying a mobile device for emergency calling and or a whistle to notify other pedestrians. If using a mobility device, consider accessibility concerns. Next slide, please. Just a few of the Maryland pedestrian laws. I won't go over all of them. Um, I know there's fines from $40 and up to $500 for disobeying all of these laws as posted. Um, failure to obey red traffic signal, failure to yield the right of way to vehicles, failure to cross at a signalized intersection, and a pedestrian that's unlawfully on the roadways. Next slide, please. And we want to identify some uh, walk, or bike, or road resources that's available here in Howard County. Remember, this is just a small list of what's available. Um, you can find more routes on, on CA, that's the Columbia Associations, through their uh, all trails profile there. Just one of the ones we wanted to highlight was the Lake Eckhorn, um, Locust Park Pool to Jackson Pond, and you see the mileage on there as well, Centennial Park as well as um, Recreation Park has a list of different um, walking parks and trails. Next slide, please. For more information in regards to what activities are available for hiking in Maryland or um, Maryland by trails, maps, and, the sh and what exactly is a shared use agreement, you'll be able to click on the, uh, the links that are displayed in the chat. And just for clarity standpoint, a shared use agreement for those who have never heard that term before, it's also known as a joint use agreement or a memorandum of understanding and contract. It allows the public and private property owners to broaden access to underutilized services for community use. For example, if a community is next or nearby to a local school, there can be a, a shared use agreement where the community, community could have access to the um, school's playground and or their um, track that they use once the schools are has been dismissed. Next slide, please. Upcoming Walktober Walkinars. For Howard County, we have three more Walkinars. As you can see on there, Walkinar 2 is uh, next week. And I mentioned earlier here that you were going to hear more as far as older adults. So that um, Walkinar Webinar 2 is going to highlight aging, act aging actively. Move your way to better health. That's on October 13th at 11 a.m. And then we have webinar three, stay active with a disability. Adapt the fund for everyone. That'll be on the 19th at 11 a.m. And then in conclusion, here we will have a webinar four, four at the end of the month here on pedestrian safety for children. Be safe and be seen. That one, note the time on that one. That one's going to be starting at 6 p.m. For more information, you can see the link that's on the screen as well as what's in the chat. Next slide, please.
Also wanted to highlight the walk, upcoming Walktober webinars here for the state of Maryland. The state of Maryland has four webinars here. There's I'm just going to start on Thursday. And it's called Taking Fresh Steps Toward a More Walkable, Friendly Maryland. If you notice on the screen as well, you can see all of the other uh, walking hours and their specific dates and times that they will be held. Um, the information is provided in the, not only on the screen, but in the uh, chat box as well. Next slide, please. For those that participated, in today's webinar, please complete the evaluation survey at the link on the screen, as well as the link that's provided in the chat box. Next one, please, Kim. There's any please questions use the you want to go ahead, ahead and use the chat box. If there's any questions, you can use the chat box. You can also use the Zoom's q and It doesn't look like we have any questions submitted yet, but please feel free to do that. We um, are opening up the time now and all the presenters are available to answer any questions. Chris, had a question for you in regards to complete streets. And I would imagine you're gonna talk more about this next week at your session. But um, the, your complete streets program was in collaboration with the uh, MDOT, correct, sir? I'm not sure. We might have lost Chris there, Rodney. I don't see any other questions coming up. Um, I did want to make sure that we highlighted an upcoming event, the Downtown Columbia Partnership, the Howard County Office of Transportation, Columbia Association and more are going to be holding a bike around the block party from 3.30 to 6.30 on Friday. Um, for more information, you can visit the link in the chat. I'm um, adding it right now. And if there are no other questions, I'll go ahead and uh, conclude this. Um, there are several um, titles about walking and your, if you would like to learn more about or find additional inspiration for adding walking fitness goals, uh, you can check out these and other titles available at HCLS. If you'd like to request any of the titles, you can um, click on the links below. I will be putting them in the chat and also in the description of the YouTube 
Um, thank you all for joining us and have a great day. Um, if at any time you would like to download the chat, you can always click on the three small dots um, and download the chat so you can have a record of all of the links and helpful information that was shared today. Um, thank you so much, Rodney, uh, Julie, Chris, and Ernie uh, for your presentation today. I'm sure I, I am joined by everyone else that attended today that I've learned a lot and we'll be um, making some walking goals. Cool. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. Thank you, and have a good day. No problem. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.